Hi. What's up? This is the show. It's beginning. Mokan, how you doing, I buddy? I wish we I had a host. Well, I am well. I'm just putting my phone on airplane. Yeah. All right, welcome back here. Let's dive into the Div 3 action. It's a very quick Div 3, like PZ's. Love life. Not Love feet. Life. Uh, <laughs> number two action that he had before. I, I, uh, I, I had to let that one go, man. Sorry for Div 3 for the delay. All right, let's well, dive into the No. No, they know. I'm very open with the audience. With the audience. Definitely are. All right, let's dive into it, boys. Uh, divisional playoffs, quarterfinals happened. We're now into the semifinals, which we'll preview in two sir, seconds. Yes, sir. Uh, divisional playoffs last Saturday. Quickly, guys, anything that caught your attention before we recap? Purple Rain, hometown heroes. Yeah, great game. Fantastic game, last play game. Yeah. I'm I'm a bit surprised by the outcome. I was expecting can, can Purple Rain. Can you also explain 91 you point game. Can you explain 46, what you mean 45. by last play of the game, please? Oh, sorry. For those at yes. home... Well, we I was the expecting game. the guy who was hosting the show and was there to explain it, but okay. Uh, but you brought it up. Yeah. Was, okay, cool. I like you brought up things too. Hometown Heroes scored in the last play of the game to win. They won by, they, what was the final score? 46-45. 46-45. Scored an extra point. Great game. So, I was expecting Purple Rain to be able to sort of get away with this one. Hometown Heroes, they started really hot. They got this weird weird patch and they played uh the last two games was dark setters and lightweight which was weren't the two prettiest of games so i wasn't too sure where to sit with hometown heroes and now they just dropped 46 points on purple rain so i know nothing honestly and and i've been critical of alex hall back in previous weeks there's nothing else he could have done in this game i scored 45 points i thought you were going to start that sentence with honestly quarterback you do know nothing (laughs) 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 that would have been awesome Um, quarterback of the year alex hall yeah yeah Um, fantastic year i was actually at the uh lgm le malade game um and it was a weird game like so alex lgm won yeah lgm won 3732 alex lever made a mistake right in sort of the middle of the second half and it led to my lead score, and I was like, mm, okay, I guess this is slipping away from LGM. But then, so LGM were just far more poised, and they my lead every single call that didn't go their way. Even think like, guy clearly caught the ball in the middle of the field, out of bounds! Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> he was like 10 yards away from being out of bounds, but nice try. Um, and I, it was honestly, it was a good game. Uh, other than uh, the complainer faces, um, <laughs> it, was, it was fun. It was really back and forth. Um, basically, Anthony Beauchamp Fraser had two chances at Hail Marys, and um, Malcolm Archer had two big sacks prior that forced him into that position. So, um, great, great game uh, by by Malcolm Archer, four sacks total, um, and forcing early throws on those Hail Marys. That KGP DTM. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the game I wanted to bring this up. This wasn't. Uh, so when a we win. say we know nothing. KG, James Crow for KGB did play. <laughs> yes, he did. But but which, this was which, a beat. Oh, oh, I got a story. I got a story about how Simon knows nothing. So Simon tells me, yeah, so uh, for uh, dad bods, I don't think Rich Humes is playing. He's sick. He has plantar fasciitis. I was like, Simon, that's an injury, not an illness. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, he's been on pills. He's like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. anti inflammatory pills. Probably. Yes. Uh, like so this pills. Wasn't, this wasn't when this was a beatdown. Uh, KGB had the scheme well in control. Uh, Matt Pereka. Which is, well. But you know what the key thing was? Alex Pilon did not play. I, yeah, so no, no told, Alex Pilon. From what I was told, he notified the team two hours prior to the start of this game he wasn't coming. And that kind of unraveled That's fine. the team's uh, game plan. It, it's a big difference. He's a, he's a difference maker in Division Three. That would have changed the outcome. But for drop the mic to only score 18 points, only two passing touchdowns, that's a bit... Yeah, they, they, with, they, with or without Alex Pilon, that's not... They didn't look like they were in rhythm at all. They just did not find, find it at all. They were not that. That should have been a good game for them. It wasn't. Sean Brophy destroyed them four touchdowns on four catches. KGP man, they. I wasn't expecting them to be competitive. They showed up with seven guys, including James Crow, and they got it done. Fast forward to Monday, uh, probably the best game uh, that went to overtime. Which one? Brotherhood against Dad Bods, mm-hmm. which Dad Bods were up uh, at halftime by a score. I believe it was twenty. Uh, what was it 21 or my big, big problem 22, 22, 22, 22 to 14, 14 which were up uh, they were actually in control of the game and then that buzz couldn't score in the second half couldn't score in the second half uh, big catch for the game tied touchdown by Jamal Giddens uh, to send it to overtime on a two point cover by Omar Jackson it went to the last play which uh, Dabaz held a 2-1 lead on the third try for uh, Brotherhood 
And Theo Jaya hitting the game-winning two-pointer, 23-22. Really good game. This could have been a finals game. I mean, you look at uh, Dabaz, they had chances, but unfortunately for them, couldn't come up when it mattered most in the second half. Yeah, they needed they needed basically to score once in the second half. Like not just not just any the, any points. Yeah, like they, anything. Like not just even in retrospect. Just like you can't expect to not score. You can't expect to win a just, just the fact just the fact that this game went to overtime is a miracle, given that they didn't score in the second but half. But the thing is, they held Theo in check. Like they, it felt like Brotherhood was out of it mentally and physically in the first half. Never got into rhythm, and then finally they they were able to capitalize on the mistakes. Yeah, but that bod's defense is very good. They're but, very good, but, uh, and they played well for probably eighty. Seven percent of the game until but the like last. Uh, the twenty-three from Brotherhood didn't surprise me. I thought this is the kind of game where maybe Sean Avram only gets a touchdown or two, just because of how good Brotherhood's defense is. But Dadbot's defense holding Brotherhood to only twenty-three points does not surprise me. But I'll be honest. Like I played, well, I played. We played, we didn't really play. Play is not the right word. Well, but like a warm up. <laughs> yeah, like we got trashed by Brotherhood in the first round. And as weird as that sounds, we like, we shouldn't have been able to stop them. But they had a bunch of four downs for no reason. And they they made some, like I'll, I'll put, when when the game was over, in my mind they just tried some weird different plays that didn't really work because it didn't matter. Like the game was out of hand for us. We never had a really we never had a shot, so they just kind of toyed with it. But reflecting back on the game, there's they only scored on jump balls, and like out wrestling guys for balls. It's not how you win championship games. Like you won't win four games in a row using only jump balls. And now that I look at the score against that bods, I'm thinking that, well, listen, uh, it might have not just been a fluke, you know? So, yes, the Brotherhood are playing in the conference finals. Yes, their jump balls are still going to be a huge factor coming into the next game against two and a half times. But two and a half times defense is good. Yeah, but like they can't cover Jamal Gaines on a jump ball but or a Mar Jackson. But, two HD. but can you score six times that way? Hey, but no. two, two HD got lucky though against hometown heroes, and uh, big lucky. big uh, salute to Anthony Lazara who uh, dislocated his elbow mm. and uh, had to go to the hospital. But the thing was Yeesh. that that derailed hometown heroes because at that moment the game was with I think within two points. So Lazara obviously delaying the football field. They come back to live action. Armenio Adjuluka throws an INT. They never found their their wind ever again. And lose by nine. Well, it's tough when you but get I mean, like that, you're saying, you know? they're lucky. I mean, you had Luca also threw three interceptions in the game. But remember, Joey Third was, I believe, one for eight to start off the game. Okay, mm-hmm. but after that's that, a, that's uncursed. In, in, in Div three, in Div three, d- there's going to be enough possessions, especially it's in a game with divisions. these two teams. It's one of those weird divisions where you do get more shots than you should. Yeah, well, because the again, the offenses are efficient. There's a lot of scoring. Like, no, but like, especially these two teams, the both teams play a very quick. Offense, they have a lot of quick huddles. Yeah, but even up. like uh, Brotherhood and Dabots, like mm-hmm. Dabots couldn't score in the second half, and they probably had three or four shots yeah. at it. Like they didn't get one or two possessions. That was it. They probably got like three or four, and they couldn't score on any of them in the second half. Yeah, they do get a lot of possessions and a lot of opportunities. So it, it's it's weird to me to see that hometown heroes was only was held to only twenty four points after what they did against Purple Rain. But to to what piece said earlier two and a half hands does have a very good defense that nobody gives them credit for top sauce Laval's fine is surprised by the wins over uh, top sauce over LGM no. which LGM was a part of I, I'm surprised by the point differential I thought LGM would have been able to score more That's of fair. course uh, uh, Chris Millard it is a bad tore open up. the hand of uh, <laughs> slashed uh, open uh, his uh, hand of uh, Alex Lever yeah. I'm exaggerating of course but uh, Alex Lever not happy with some of the contact it, it is a bad sorry matchup for that, I'm losing my voice sorry need some Drano <laughs> Keep my pipes clean. Um, yeah, so the thing is, is that um, I, I was looking at GM to hope he could jump in since he was at, at this game. Maybe cue me then. Yeah, well, because I was looking at you, but your, your head was down. I was like, GM, go. Hi. Speak. Good afternoon. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it honestly just speaks that it was more than anything a bad matchup for LGM. Um, consistent pressure from, from Chris Miard. Um there's a lot of speed on top sauce as well that LGM weren't able to cover as a whole. So there's always one or two mismatches regardless of whatever coverage was there because the caliber of, of LGM in certain places was just a little bit lacking in that game. All right, boys, let's uh, dive into the playoff preview then. Let's go. Um, Brotherhood 2HD. The Hood defeated 2HD 25-7. Uh, the best template for 2HD to when approaching the Brotherhood defense is what? 
because it's the only game they were held to less than 10 points. So they're going to see a lot of man defense, which is the thing that stops Joey Taylor because his offense is predicated on picking holes in zones. Um, they do win matchups. Sorry? Brotherhood does win matchups across the board. Well, again. So Brotherhood can arm. legitimately play man every single play. And if they float it a lot, they have the speed to get that. Yeah. Ball. Okay, so for, for Joey Taylor, is it a matter of being simply chaotic with his offense or maybe going deep here and there? So his offense actually isn't chaotic. It's remarkably calculated. It just looks crazy because it, it looks doesn't, chaotic. It doesn't, f- it doesn't fit what we think an FPF offense is supposed to look so like. So it's, it's like our show. It yeah. looks chaotic, but, but it's, yeah, it's very calculated. But that's the great thing, I think, because if he plays that sort of calculated but chaotic to to the eye of the Brotherhood, they're not going to respect it. Like they're not going to respect him, and he needs to take that into yeah, as it, it's his so, va- advantage. It's so tough, GM, because like at some point, there's only so many man busters you can you can call when you don't have the matchups to win, and and Joey Taylor doesn't have a rocket to fit it into tight windows. Uh, that's the one drawback of his play is he, he doesn't have a great arm. Plus the Brotherhood defense. I mean, even if you can call man buster plays, they can make up for it, right? They're extremely athletic, and exactly, you try and jam them, they can read the play, they can get to the right spot. They're also used to those kind of jams. Or and there's three refs, so the picks are harder to run. All right, for, so, f- f- the, sorry, the, the, so the biggest story, in my opinion, is the fact that Joey Taylor is afraid of playing the Brotherhood. Yeah. We all know that. Like, it's it's a fact. And so... For Joey, he's going to come in this game thinking that he's going to have a tough time, which is going to make it tough on him. On the flip side, Brotherhood is way too cocky and confident about this matchup. So this could play out terribly for both teams or really well for However, for the purpose of the best matchup to be played for the Brotherhood, Khalil Clare is eligible to play. He has six games, but for because of cap purposes, they can't have him in the lineup. It's either yep. him or someone else. That has it's to him or Omar. Omar, Omar Jackson. Yes, sorry. In the case of this week, do you take out Omar Jackson, who had a big game against Dabaz, and put in Khalil Kerr because yes. of his pass rushing ability? And no, he, but even in coverage, just is it the better play from the play? They, from he's, the he's, he's a faster. They need the speed from Khalil yeah. Kerr because the, they don't need the size from Omar Jackson. Offensively, Agreed. yes, Omar Jackson's size and jump ball abilities and what he represents is better. But defensively, they need a guy like a little to undercut guys and to make plays. Yeah. Omar, there's not going to be a lot of jump balls for Omar to pick on defense. But for for two HD's offense, or sorry, my big problem, their defense. Can they stop the deep ball Theo J if they put Kilikur and who's a speed demon along with Quazy Gordon Jamal and yes. Jamal Ginn as well? Jamal is the fastest guy on the team. Uh, again, so I don't think they're going to even see a lot of deep balls. I, I, it's going to be about. Staying with guys in the flats and and really taking away all the reads for Joey Taylor, so that's the only way you're gonna get deep balls is is if you force him to say, well, I have one on one deep and every all my other routes are covered up. What do you mean for for brotherhood? So I was answering for two and a half dance. Oh yeah, 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 no, I but mean, for brotherhood's offense. Okay, if you get a guy like so, most likely if you put Kalilker on the as a wide receiver on the outside, he's gonna be a matchup against Shaq Lattimore. Mm-hmm. Try it four times in a row. I like Shaq Lattimore on Jamal Kittens. But on Because his ability to jump like is if you, impressive. If the, you're 40 yards away. You give Killer Kerr 40 yards. You think he could get there for and beat Shaq Lattimore? No, I he'll, think he'll beat Shaq Lattimore. I think so. Okay. so I get, think you're actually better off with Matt Rupsick, like on Killer Kerr. And, and Shaq on Jamal. And Shaq on Jamal. Because Shaq Lattimore, like he's fast, but his best ability is to jump. And Matt Rupsick is physical and can play with he's him. physical enough to bump you yeah. off your route just exactly not to only dis- is Shaq Lattimore great at like vertical jumps I love the way he jumps routes yeah like, laterally he's quick uh, it later- exactly because like he's not th- the tallest guy so it's almost as if he hides behind the receiver while the ball is being and thrown then and then he comes around yeah. and picks yeah, it yeah, off yeah, yeah. like it's, he's, he's like it's a, stellar he's, he's like a bowling ball of knives he can, mm. he can pierce through it. When I say that, he can just Mo pierce Kahn's through. Mokan's spending too much time with us. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. But no, he, he, he can pierce Bones through. Bones. Like he, he, on any given moment, you, when you least expect him to come out of nowhere, he comes, bam, like that, and he will destroy a play in two seconds. Yes, Eagle. Don't you guys feel, though, that if you have Shaq Lattimore matched up against Jamal Gittins, you're going to have, I won't call it the height mismatch because of the jump ball possibilities, but just Gittins being able to box him out? I mean, No, Shaq Lattimore is uh, a very aggressive player. Yeah. I'm I telling you, you, you I, agree, I agree with Pete you're, on this you're, one. you're just basing it on what the two players look like and uh, not Shaq Lattimore's m- actual ability. My only concern with that matchup is if it's man across the board, mm-hmm. Jamal's open. Jamal Gins is open on posts. 
which yes. they love to run. Yeah. If it's not man well, across not the board, I'm not saying I'm not saying man. Yeah. If it's not man across man, the board and you're looking at like some sort of four one where yeah. he's on the outside and you have a guy to help in the middle, then yes, that matchup is very good for you. All right, Laval's finest top sauce, finest one thirty two to six over top sauce, probably the worst loss for the GM. The saucers. Less uh, the saucers are like team. it. Okay, we know it's a bad matchup for top sauce. There's no ifs mm-hmm. or buts about that. You guys, it's a bad matchup for Division Three. Uh, so in this case, who strikes more fear into the finest defense, Rob Allen, Justin McLean? I'd go with Justin McLean because yeah. of his physicality. He doesn't uh, get Rob Allen's pretty physical too, man. Yeah, yeah, but in different ways. Like yes. Justin McLean is never going to give up on the ball. He's going to go all out. He's going to get hurt trying to catch a ball. Rob Allen does he need to? Because if it, you put it high enough, he's the only guy who gets there. But now he's playing against a guy like Rod Mastrub who could potentially line up against him and fight for those balls. He's one of the rare guys that could do it. So I don't think Rob Allen's going to have the greatest of impacts. But if someone has to make plays for Vince Nardone, as he likes to say, I would have to say it's Vince McLe- uh, Justin McLean. So should Dylan Taylor rightfully be upset he didn't win quarterback of the year and should he use that as his motivational tool to... I love how you didn't read what the script said because you... Because this means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just asking the question. Did, well, did we went over this in the week that Mo wasn't here. Is that like they're they're written in such a way that Mo can look down for a second, not read the whole sentence, and get the gist of it because it doesn't yeah. really make sense otherwise. Well, because he wrote Dylan Thayer felt he, he snubbed out of the QB of the year, and I wrote next to it says who. But see, he <laughs> says all of us by the way. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, the okay. voters, whoever voted for the quarterback, one here. vote, <laughs> for, one vote for all of them all. <laughs> is that what he got? You one vote got to unite them. He had one vote. Well, no, I'm saying Simo's the only person who votes. So that's what you did. Kim Jong Simo over here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nice. I would like that. But can he use this as a motivational tool? Then, like uh, he felt like I, I don't. I don't think he actually cares about that award. I think he wants to win a championship with this team. That's what the, the Vols finest is too good not to make the, the finals. And in the finals, we'll talk about the matchups. But in this particular case, the Vos Finest should not lose this game against Top Sauce. All right, but in this case, though, right? How, and I'll ask you this question, please. You can answer this. How do they avoid the complacency? Because Laval's Finest steamrolled through the competition. They had a close one against KGP, which they won by four. Yep. But now you're at the point of, hey, you're playing Top Sauce, a team that you wrecked to shreds. So, so in, in my opinion, this game comes down to, similar to last week, as long as Dylan Taylor is this efficient and this good offensively scoring 44 points 40 something points it's it, it's not in his hands for it's not about him to make plays it's going to about, be about his defense and the Vos Finest has the right defense to make Vince Nardone's life miserable so I feel that there's two parts to your question where the first one is as long as the interior does his thing the Vos Finest should win and it's out of his hands so we can't he shouldn't be stressed and he's still going to come out and have his smile on his face and play really well the one time when it doesn't go his way is when he's not able to score a lot that's when he starts getting stressed and throws stupid interceptions I don't see it happening with Laval's Finest he should be able to put up monster numbers I agree GM your thoughts you're in the game coming up on it's the weekend or consider- Monday yeah considering in the last two the last two games Laval's Finest have put up 89 points and Top Sauce have put up 86 points I think that the first team to get some interceptions will win this game okay, okay. All right, it is now time for Les Parties à Jouer. All right, here we go. Game number one. Pew, 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 pew. It is the Brotherhood against 2HD. The Hood. I'm, I I want to pick two and a half times so bad, but but I'm going to pick Brotherhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going Brotherhood here. And Laval's Finest against Top Sauce. Gentlemen. Laval's Finest. Yeah, put the sauce on the bottom because Laval's Finest will be on top. I like barbecue sauce, top sauce. Really? Yes. Okay. I think so. I think Miss Nardwan will have a game plan. Ready okay. to go. Devised. Ready to I go. like it. All right. All right. Um, I know we were supposed to do this. Actually, these guys know the drill for roadshow press yeah, conferences. Yeah, yeah. Well, know. all four of these times know. Yeah, they know the drill. They've been here before. Okay, cool. Because by Monday night, we'll have our two finalists. Yep. And then they'll be duking it out next Sunday, is it, I believe? April 8th? You'll get a message from someone. Like WrestleMania Sunday. That'll be the uh, pre-show matchup. Cool. Excellent. Cool, cool, uh, cool, match cool. words, please. Michael Bolton makes happy music for sad people. Good night, Loyola. Ooh. Predictions from all. Yeah, you said the one. Yeah. You said Wha- it yesterday. Watching Eagle drink milk at those small containers yeah, is like watching like him suck on a very plastic nipple. <laughs>